Good evening, folks. I hope you're all doing well. I just want to do a quick video before I went to bed. So the party that I told you all about tonight, I mean, this morning on the show, I'm obviously not going to that party, right? Because if I... If I were going there, I would already be there by now. For security reasons, I didn't attend the party. Uh, I just want to do a quick um, chat with you all before I, I went off to bed. Yes, I am tired. Love, Greg Johnson. I'm very tired. <laughs> it was a long day. Long day, but I'm. Um, but I think it was a good day. Kind of share this video. I can't share because once I'm live, I can't share. It, except I have to do it from the other phone. I have a few interesting developments I would like to share. Um, I would like to share a few things with you before I went to bed. Mm. Yeah, January 6th is going to happen. Today, at 3 a.m., at 3 p.m. today, I was on the BBC. At 5 p.m., there was a repeat of the BBC. It was on an interview. I was actually on the BBC a few days ago. But the press conference we had yesterday, an excerpt of the press conference was carried on the BBC. So the BBC did a piece on us today about the protest. And they spoke with the Minister of Justice, or with the Minister of Information, Eugene Nagbe. So Mr. Pelili, Jonathan Pelili, got in touch with me to say that our press conference yesterday was covered by the BBC. Quite humbling. Quite humbling. And so, beautiful stuff. So, in the last week, we've gone on the BBC twice. It's good for us. Now, some, some of you don't understand what have happening. We control the narrative. It is the COP that controls the narrative. What we say locally, internationally, carries more weight than what George Weah and his people have got to say. That is powerful messaging, propaganda, it is most critical at this stage in this struggle. We are the ones. We are the ones. We control the narrative. And so the BBC today, after the play my voice on the BBC explaining that the protest is set to happen on December on January the sixth, the BBC thought to call Len Eugene Nagwe, the Minister of Information, to ask him what he made of that. Eugene Nagwe said, and I'll play the audio for you, and it was on the BBC today, some of you may have listened to it, it was on 3 p.m. and on 5 p.m., and it will be, uh, no, it shouldn't be on tomorrow, but it was on twice today. Eugene Nagwe said that the government of Liberia will provide security for peaceful protesters, whether it is on the 6th, what is on the seventh? And do you know why Eugene Nagwe would say that? He said that because the government has lost. The government has no way around it. Now the United States Embassy, the United States Embassy issued a statement today, an alert. But this alert was a little unusual. And I don't want to try to twist their words or anything. Many of us have read alerts from the United States Embassy about protests and demonstrations. But this alert was a little unusual. This alert said that Liberian, that people will be protesting about different issues that, are, that they are facing in the country. Now, normally when the United States Embassy posts alerts about demonstrations or protests, it only seeks to provide information to its citizens. 
on where and when the protests will happen and what they should do to avoid getting caught up in these protests. But today, the alert from the United States Embassy was different. I don't know what a minute you read into it the way I read into it. They said Liberians are protesting about different issues facing them. Now, how do you understand? <clears throat> that was not an ordinary alert. An ordinary alert is just to say, hey, people are going to be protesting on January 6th. So don't come out. But the alert today doesn't say that. It says something else. It says Liberians are protesting about different issues facing them. Okay. That is a normal. The normal United States Embassy alert does not talk about anything about the purpose of the protest. No. They don't ever talk about the purpose of the protest. They only say people are protesting and provide advice on what the nationals within the country should do to avoid getting caught up in the protest. But today, their alert from the U.S. Embassy was different. I, this is key. This is very key. I want you to pick this up. It's a very key point. And I'm, and I'm being re repetitive deliberately. The alert from the U.S. Embassy today made it clear that Liberians are protesting about different issues that they are facing. Now, this does not come in isolation to all of the engagement with the international community that the Americans have played a pivotal role in. We knew that were we to come out and assert our position as Liberian citizens and demand that we be allowed to protest on the day that we desire, we knew the Americans could not further attempt to arm twist us. We knew that. Because you see, America believes in certain values. They believe in certain quintessential democratic values, peaceful protest. America was founded on protest. They can't. America cannot stifle democratic disagreements or dem uh, democratic culture. They can't. So, again, I want to repeat to you. The American embassy in their alert today said Liberians will be protesting about different issues that are facing them. How do you understand that, folks? Do they often talk about the nature of the protest or the purpose of the protest? The Americans don't. But in today's alert, they said the reasons for which Liberians will be protesting. They said that. Well, they didn't go f too far, but they just stated that Liberians are protesting about issues that are facing them. That is important. Now, some of you are wondering. On Sunday of this week, for those of you who do not know, Sunday is the first day in the week. It's not the first working day. It's actually the first day in the week. On Sunday of this week, Mo Ali and I stopped by at Tropicana Beach. So it's a nice place. I love it. I like the go. I like the ambience. I like the ambience. And I just like to sit there and convivialize. Enjoy the um, watching the Atlantic Ocean. It's a beautiful place. I like it seeing people and all that kind of stuff. So Mo Ali and I went to Tropicana Beach on Sunday. We stopped by to just mingle a little bit with two. Uh, just to de-stress. There's too much going on for us, right? So we stopped by at Tropicana Beach today on Sunday. <laughs> we got word today that the government sent people NSA and DEA officers went to Tropicana Beach. They went to the Pinesville Magisterial Court. It's published in front of South Africa. Go read the story. They went to the Pinesville Magisterial Court. Now, some of you are joking with this stuff. You're sitting there 
You thinking you're much better than me. You're much better than other people who are going to be protesting. You think everything is okay. Well, fine. Listen to this. The government, the government went to. Uh, they went. They got a raid. They went to Tropicana Beach. They raided the beach. Arrested two of the managers. Put them in jail. Confiscated. The CCTV. Uh, footage. From the day we went. They confiscated their laptops. The NSA took their managers to the NSA. And they investigated them. And you know why? They said because we went to Tropicana Beach. They said they believe that. Tropicana Beach, the management of Tropicana Beach is, is supporting the COP. Come. They said they believe. I'm going to go wait for me. They said they believe that the management of Tropicana Beach is supporting the COP. Can you imagine that? So we go to what did I have? I had vegetable salad, and we had a bottle of red wine, sweet red. My friend Rodney, she is on. Rodney did a story. Rodney is right here. I just saw Rodney pop up. Rodney, please tell us. Did, didn't you do a story? Rodney is here. Did a story. They arrested two of the managers at Tropicana. They put them in jail. They searched all over the place. They said in a rate. Of such a seizure, they were looking for checks that the management wrote to us. Copies of the checks. Are you are you listening to this? They were looking for checks. The management wrote us checks. Now, now some of you take this thing to be a joke. These people are dangerous people. They harassed a hospitality establishment. Because we went there. So if we came to your restaurant, there's a strong chance that your restaurant might get shut down. And your management people arrested. Ask Rodney. Rodney, my friend, you just popped up. Didn't you do a story? From Miss Africa, did a story. It's serious. It's extremely sad. And this is the this is what you want to live on? And some of you don't want to protest. We go to an entertainment center. You arrest the managers. You search the entire place. You see their computers and their CCTV cameras. And some of you are taking the thing to be joke. There's something wrong with you. We're back in the freaking days of the PLC. We have idiots and detectors on our hands. I just came home. And I said I was going to do a video about this before I went to bed. Some of you are laughing because you're sick and stupid. That's why you're laughing. You don't find a problem with this. Is this something to make anyone laugh? Should you like this? It's very sad. And this is the government that says to people that it wants investors to come to the country. And they do this. So because we went to eat out at Tropicana Beach, we sat there in the open, in the middle of everyone, and they said the management is supporting the protest. They arrest the management of the, of the entertainment spot. These people are sick. They're sick. And anyone who defends this is sick. Sad. Anybody who defends this, you're sick and you're stupid.
That's what you are. So now we can't go certain places? Do you seriously want to defend this? Can anybody seriously? And they got a writ from the court, from the Pinesville Magisterial Court. And they said, we're assessing for the copies of the checks. We got information that you wrote checks to the COP. What? You wrote checks to the COP? Sometimes I just want to give up. The country is a fucking mess. Sorry for my expression. Sometimes I think that the country does not deserve my sacrifice. What kind of country is this? You can't go eat certain places now. They're going to go raid them and arrest them and put their managers in jail. Because Costa went to eat there. Because Mo Ali went to eat there. I see someone used to laugh at me. <laughs> You're sick and stupid. Just as stupid as George we are. That's what you are. Anybody who defends this. You can't eat at certain places and raid them. But January 6th is a day we humiliate George Weah. By a large crowd. A very large, peaceful crowd. That's the day we humiliate him. That's the one thing he's afraid of. He becomes fretful. That's the word. A large crowd that does not chant his name. January 6th, Monday. So, of course, the international community apparently has given up. They have realized that we're not going to not do our protest because of this. We're going ahead. Whatever happens, happens. Sometimes you just give it to God. Whatever happens. We don't have to do this protest. If George Weah could deliver on certain things, we don't have to do this protest. He could call it off. But he doesn't want to. I want you all to understand. The COP is the only pressure mechanism in this country. Say what you may. That's your business. George Weah is afraid of the pressure that the COP brings to bear. And the COP is the ordinary Liberian man and Liberian woman out there. And we cannot fail to accomplish this. I'm, I'm very angry. I'm extremely angry. But I'm just coming down. Because, folks, we have a lot of people who listen to us and a lot of foreign people watching us. But it's painful, man. You mean I can't eat certain places again anymore? I can't go to certain places without them getting harassed on account of me going there? In my own country? I never saw this on an Ellen. And Ellen's a terrible, wicked, old damn witch. But I never saw this on an Ellen. God. They vandalize Tropicana Beach on account of us going there on Sunday. Arrested the two managers and took them to the NSA. And they said they want checks, copies of the checks that the management wrote to us. Look at the people we're dealing with. We're dealing with idiots. Idiots. 
You don't come out there on Monday. You sit home, you don't come out there. I'm tired. If you don't impress me, I'm not speaking for Dillon. I'm not speaking for Sanvi. I'm speaking for me. Say what you mean. I'm speaking for me. I know what I have done. They will tell you what they will say. They can speak for themselves. But I'm telling you, for me. I speak for me. If you don't turn out on Monday to send a very powerful statement to the world about this man, I am never, ever calling any protest in this country. Okay. Let me repeat. If you don't come out on Monday, if you think that your life is better than my life, I'm never ever calling any protest in this country. I will get on that damn plane. I will go back to America. And we all will just talk. And let Josiah destroy the damn country. And don't tell me you I shouldn't give up. Tell me you will come. Tell me you will come. Don't tell me, don't give up. I don't want your encouragement. I've got enough encouragement. I've got enough self-motivation. I want you to tell me you will come. We are slipping fast back into the dark days. The days of detection. That's, that's what we're slipping back. I want to say something here, but I will not say it. It's very important. I will not say it. Encourage your friends. Encourage your family members. Pick up the phone. Talk to people. They must show up. Or shut up. They must show up on Monday or shut the hell up. Are you better than me? Are you better than Dillon? Show up on Monday or shut the hell up. I'm freaking serious. I'm not here to beg you. Why am I supposed to be begging you? Suppose they will let go to mobilization. What mobilization? I'm not going out to do any damn mobilization. If you are not angry as I'm angry about what's happening in the country, stay home. Drink your damn beer. Enjoy yourselves on Monday. And we will go out there. Be there, Brooklyn, my friend. I have to tell these people what's at stake. I have to tell them what's at stake. I'm not here to beg you to come out. I'm not asking you for your votes. I'm not asking you for anything. I'm asking you to stand up for yourselves. The country is in trouble. Something happened today. But I do not have the blessing of the COP to tell you. Even though I'm the chairman of the COP. I don't have the blessing of the COP to tell you. I will tell you after our meeting tomorrow, that is if the COP gives me the blessing to tell you. If you don't come out Monday, I lose faith in you. I do. You better go all over Facebook and talk about this protest. Enough is enough. Some of us have risked too much already. You're not better than me. You're, you're not better than any one of us who are getting attacked on the streets, who are getting death threats. You're not better than us. Those, those of you who are on my live video, you better be laughing but not show yourself. Because the moment I see you, I will just block you for good. And I block you for good and you're not going to come back here. I'm talking a serious matter. 
This is not about ANC or ALP or CDC or UP. It is about your country. It's about your country. You're not doing this for Cummings or for Yuri or for Buakai or for Costa. You're doing this for yourselves. You want to sit here and let this joker run the country into the ground? Is that what you want? Seriously? So stay home. Stay home on Monday. Enjoy yourself. You think that we're going to go out there and then you're going to see a little and say, oh, thank you for so much for what you're doing. This is the attitude with this country. People see what's wrong and everybody agrees that it is wrong. But yet, some of you don't want to stand up against what is wrong. Enough is enough. The country is dying. The country is dying. The country is dying. Nothing's working. Businesses are folding up and leaving. People are getting laid off. People work for many months with government. They can't take pay. No confidence. Investors in coming. Stay home Monday. You think you're better than me? Like I said, I'm not talking for anybody else. I'm talking. I'm just asking you. Do you think you're better than me? Most of you are watching this video. Is your life more better than mine? I mean, is is your life better than mine? Of course. Is your life better than mine? Is your life more precious than mine? If you think that, if you truly believe that, then sit home. Enjoy yourselves. This is what you do in this country. This is why change. This is why nothing has really happened in this country. Because people believe they're too good to stand up for certain things. People only talk, 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 talk. At the beer table or dining table with their friends and their families and loved ones. They mumble. And for everything that's wrong in the country. But nobody wants to stand up. I know there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people who will join us, but we need hundreds of thousands of people because it is millions and millions of people in this country who feel the, the brunt of the hardship in this country. And so, for me, this is my last one. I swear. If you don't impress me, I'm not going to use anybody else's standard. I don't care how Dylan sees it, or how Ben Sanvi sees it, or how Mo Ali sees it. I don't care how Yeke Kolba sees it. I'm not going to use their standard to measure the success of the protest. I'm not going to use their standard. I'm going to use my standard to measure the success of the protest. My standard. And if my measurement tells me that it was a flop, I'm done. I'm done. Say what you want to say. I'm done. I'm, I would never be part of another protest in this country if you don't come out in your hundreds of thousands. Oh, day or complain. Oh, the country, huh? Oh, the mess for the country. Oh, we're suffering the country. Oh, the country. Elizabeth, you don't understand what I'm saying. I mean, favor highly. You don't understand. I'm talking about my own stand-up. I'm not waiting for Dylan to tell me it was successful. Or for Ben Sanvi or Mo Ali or Reverend Stepter or Jeremiah Wapo to tell me, oh, it was a huge success. No. My own stand-up. That's my own stand-up. If I don't think it was successful, after June, after January 6th, I will announce that I am stepping down. That's what I'm going to announce. 
from the COP. If you think I'm joking, what does the COP do for me? The COP does nothing for me. What do I benefit? benefit? Risking my life? Spending my personal money to do this and do that? Do you know how much personal sacrifice we make for this? Risking my life? Spending my own money to do this? Don't tell me about Arook, Arookans. I want to make you, I want to make you come out. That's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm saying this to you. For you to come out. That's why I'm saying this. It's not about arrogance. I'm telling you, if this does not succeed, I'm done. If you don't come out in your hundreds of thousands, I'm done. All those poor people in Buse Quarter, in Soniwe, in Gibraltar, in Clarata, in Lokintan, in Jamaica, Jamaica Road. All those people in Sinko. All those people in Fiamma. In Matari. Cabra. Stephen Thomas Estate. If you don't come out. I'm never risking my life. I'm done. You know what my plan is? I'm, I'm not here to beg you. I'm here to tell you what's at stake country's survivor is a stick. You want to stay home? Stay home. That's your business. Stay home! You think a COP are coming to, a chairman of the COP are coming here to beg you for your own country? I will beg you for the way they've destroyed this country? So you better come. Am I asking you for your vote? Am I telling you to make me a representative or a senator? No. I'm asking you to stand up for yourselves. Make a powerful stick. Look at the whole world is watching us. Last night I was on the VOA. Today we, we were on BBC. We've been on Al Jazeera. All the international media people. We have exposed this man. We have disgraced this thief, this criminal. That's embarrassing for us. Oh, I got to tell you. So you just stay home. But don't tell patient. Don't tell me about trust in the process. I know these Liberian people. They got big muff. Monday they'll be sitting now watching Facebook Live and drinking beer. While we're under the hot sun. Patience. My sister, don't tell me that. I know these people. Don't tell me that. If they don't come out, I'm done. I'm not here to beg you. That your, that your business. I will be there. I'll be on the front line. If you don't come. I'm really hurt. I'm really, really hurt. Can you tell you? See you, Baba. Say whatever you want to say. God knows I've done my best. I've made all the sacrifices. I speak for myself, as I said. I don't speak for anybody here. I speak for myself. I know what I have done. I know the risk I have taken. I know how much more risk I am prepared to take. But if you are not prepared to meet me halfway, I will never take any more risk for you. I see you. Good night.